Hey, reader friends, this is Mrs. Olson, and I have a wonderful book to share with you today, but I kind of have a sore throat, and so I've got something special. The author is going to read it to you. Yeah, here she goes. This is Audible. Listening Library presents The World Needs More Purple People by Kristen Bell and Benjamin Hart. This is the author, Kristen Bell. This book is dedicated to all purple people. Whatever shade, we're glad you're here. Hey, kid, I've got a secret. It's going to knock your socks off, and I can't wait to share it with you. Ta-da! Follow my guide to become a purple person. How to be a purple person by Penny. Now, you may be asking yourself, why in the whole wide world would I want to be purple? Purple is a magic color made when red and blue work together. I think all the best things in the world are purple. But you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with people? <laughs> wow, are you a genius? Because you're already on your way to becoming a purple person. You want to know why? Step one, ask really great questions. My dad says purple people ask great questions. Questions about everything. Even questions about questions. Hey dad, how far away is outer space? Have you ever met a dolphin? How many dolphins live in outer space? Purple questions are the kind that help you learn something really big about the world or something really small about another person. How tall is the world's tallest rainbow? What's your bear's name? Charlie. Dad says the more purple questions you ask, the more purple you become. How many do you think there are? He also says I can only ask him 20 questions about space dolphins per day. Step two, laugh a lot. My grandma says purple people laugh a lot. We're always laughing together. I mean, like, snot out our nose laughing. <laughs> we laugh at books. We laugh at jokes. How do you make a tissue dance? Put a little boogie in it. We laugh at donkey dances and hairy elephant knees. And we especially laugh at Grandpa's funny noises. <laughs> Purple laughing helps us remember the things we share and forget what we thought made us different. And it's almost impossible to be angry when you're laughing. Try it. I dare you. Grandma says the more purple laughing you do, the more purple you become. She also says Grandpa's noises are her favorite funny noises in the whole wide world. Step three, use your voice and don't lose your voice. My mom says purple people use their voice and don't lose their voice. She encourages me to use my voice to sing. My dad is the one with the hairy chest who loves me more than all the rest. To give good ideas. Let's wear monster costumes to school. And to share my opinions. I personally feel like we shouldn't have to eat Brussels sprouts because they smell like sweaty socks. Sometimes people lose their voice. And that's okay. It happens. A purple voice helps someone who's having trouble finding their own voice. Purple people don't just speak up. They also listen. Maybe you could tell them you don't like it when they call you that name. Want me to help you tell them? Mom says the more you use a purple voice, the more purple you become. Mom, can you help me with my play? She also says she heard my opinion on Brussels sprouts but I still have to eat them. I'm gonna work on a better argument. Step four, work hard, super duper hard. My grandpa says purple people know how to dig in and get stuff done. He and I like to work hard while we build things and while we learn things and while we grow things. 
Purple work is the kind of work that's done together to change something that needs changing. What do we want? More playgrounds! When do we want them? Now! Fix something that needs fixing? Or help someone who needs helping? Grandpa says the more purple work you do, the more purple you become. He also says no purple work has ever been done while sitting on your backside sipping strawberry lemonade. Okay, are you ready for the last step? Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Are you really, really ready? Okay, drum roll, please. Step five, paint yourself purple. Just kidding. That's not the way to become a purple person. Actually, being a purple person has nothing to do with what you look like. My teacher says purple people look all sorts of ways. They are big and small, old and young. Some wear cool coats, some wear shorts with lots of pockets, and some wear funny hats. She says some purple people feel blue sometimes and red other times. And some purple people even have green hair. Step five, just be the real you. Like my teacher always says, purple people come in every color you can dream up and every size you can think of. The only way to be purple is to just be you because you're the only you we've got. So those are my surefire steps to turning into a purple person. Hey, wait a minute. You ask really great questions. You laugh a lot. You use your voice all the time. You are a really hard worker and you are totally you. Well, I'll be a llama's mama. You've been beautifully purple this whole time. I sure am glad you're a purple person because the world needs more purple people just like you. This is Kristen Bell. We hope you have enjoyed this unabridged production of The World Needs More Purple People by Kristen Bell and Benjamin Hart. This program was directed by Scott Sherritt, executive producer, Laura Wilson. Text copyright 2020 by Kristen Bell. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoyed hearing Mrs. Bell read her story. I have some things in your seesaw that I'd like for you to work on as you think about whether or not you are a purple person. So in your seesaw, there are some templates. And the first one reminds us of what Miss Bell told us about her steps. Step one, ask really great questions. So here I've given you a spot where you can make a text box and answer the question, what makes you curious? What are you interested in? What do you want to know more about the world? Maybe you're interested in space dolphins, huh? The next one says, step two, laugh a lot. And here we've got some kids that are telling some jokes. He's checked out a book that's called Best jokes ever. The riddle is, why was the teacher mad at the scissors? She's got the answer. They kept cutting up in class. Get it? The scissors were cutting up? Hmm. Well, what makes you laugh? Is it jokes and riddles? Is it cartoons on television? Is it your little brother? What makes you laugh? The next one says, step three, use your voice. Now in the book, Penny was talking about Brussels sprouts, but I have some different vegetables pictured here. And I'm asking, what is your opinion about eating veggies? So you're going to look at each vegetable and then circle yes or circle no and tell me whether you like it or not. The first one is carrot. And then we have broccoli, potato, cucumber, red pepper, green beans, lettuce, and onion. 
So to tell me your opinion, you can circle yes or you can circle no. Or if you just want to use a drawing tool and make a dot on the one that you agree with or X out the one you don't agree with, you come up with a way to share your opinion with Miss Olson, okay? All right, step four, Miss Bell said that was work hard, super duper hard. And we've got some kids at school that are working and they have two questions for you. Which school subject is easiest for you? All right, maybe you're good at reading or math or maybe it's art or maybe it's science that you like the best. And then which school subject requires hard work? So down here, write the one that you really have to work on hard so that you can get better at it. Maybe you're working really hard to be a better reader. Or maybe you're working really hard to be better at math. Maybe you're working hard to learn something that Miss Spencer's teaching in music. Tell me your easiest here, the one that needs more hard work right there. Finally, step five was when Miss Bell was telling us that to be a purple person, you really just have to be you. So I've got a little brain here that's full of love for you guys, and it's going to help you think of some good words to describe you. So pretend this is a real mirror. You can look at your gorgeous face and answer the question, which words describe you? You can use some of the words that I've written here as an example, or you can come up with your own words, either one. My examples are funny, kind, silly, fit, fast, quiet, nice, smart, talented, young, loving. So you can think about my words and make a list with a text box of words that describe you or come up with your own words completely. When you're finished with each of the slides and you've answered the questions and you're officially a purple person, don't forget to click that little green check mark for me so I'll be able to look at your work and enjoy all of your fun ideas. Thanks, guys. I hope you had a good time today and enjoyed the purple person book because the world needs more purple people like you. See you soon. Bye-bye.